What is up guys? Today I am working on my 1991 Toyota Land Cruiser and I'm replacing the fuel filter. Yes, this is a much anticipated video for many of you. Um, and I'm going to replace the fuel filter today. I kind of put it off for a couple weeks. Uh, every time I got under there, I wasn't able to take it out and I ended up figuring out how to do it. So here's the full video. So you're going to see like different clips uh, from different locations just because I had to stop and, and retry. So anyways, I'm going to show you how to depressurize the fuel system. Now, a lot of people say that you could just remove uh, or unscrew the fuel cap um, and that'll depressurize it. That's not necessarily going to depressurize it completely. There's one more thing that you have to do and you have to remove the circuit opening relay and I'm gonna show you exactly where to do that. So uh, it's right here on the driver's side kick panel. You'll see that I have already removed this. I'm not gonna show you how to do it because uh, I think the previous owner had already removed it before and so mine was super easy and I had to unscrew this part right here. This has a little screw and I just kind of removed that there. And right behind there, you're gonna notice a, a square, it's a relay and it's called the circuit opening relay. And so I'm gonna pop it off right now so you guys can check it out and you guys can read it because uh, it's hard to see in the camera. But that's basically where you're gonna wanna take out. And what you're gonna wanna do for this process to depressurize the fuel system is you're gonna start your engine and then once you have that exposed, you're gonna pull that out and then uh, you're gonna notice that your engine's gonna die out almost immediately. Um, and this is what controls your fuel pump. So this is another tip, if you have a uh, bad fuel pump issues or you think it's your fuel pump, you might wanna check this, this might be the cause of it. So let's get started. Okay, so it started. Now with the engine started, I'm going to remove it. engine just turned off by itself all right that's it guys the fuel system is depressurized and a lot of you might wonder well why do this well you don't want a ton of uh, gasoline squirting all over the place um, so you want to depressurize the fuel system it will reduce the amount of gasoline that's going to be pushed out and also is this going to damage my engine and the answer is no toyota recommends that this is the best way to do it and uh, it also uh, built the engine right these engines are built to stall out so they prevent damage to the engine components So you're not going to damage anything. This is just the way that they were designed So now we're under here and we're looking at the position of the fuel filter and right now I'm going to show you what the tools you're going to need to take that fuel filter off All right, and as always guys if you guys have worked on your cars before you always start off with just like a couple of tools and then you end up taking the entire thing so to first to start off today it looks like all I'm gonna need is a 19 millimeter um, wrench and then a 17 millimeter socket with an extension on it because it's kind of hard to reach and it's really hard to get leverage. So we're gonna hop under there. And if you wait till the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a huge tip that's gonna help you remove this fuel filter. So wait till the end of the video. A lot of you might already know about this, uh, but it helped me out a ton when I was trying to take this out because I struggled. Like I said, I got under there um, three or four times trying to take it out on different days and I just couldn't. So this is gonna be, if yours is hard to take out, this will probably be the key tip for you. So wait till the end. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is because it's early morning and it's hard to see, I'm gonna open up my hood so there's nice light going through and I could see clearly and I could get a good camera view. Next thing, you definitely need safety glasses. Go buy yourself a pair, you will need these. Okay, let's get under again and let me show you the position of the fuel filter and where it's located. So uh, like we said, it's right on the passenger side it's attached to the frame towards the front of the axle and you'll see it here in this other angle and what we're going to do is we're going to get our 19 millimeter and there is a spot where you can put that 19 millimeter right on that fuel filter and then you're going to get the 17 millimeter and you're going to put it right where the hose kind of connects and you're going to unscrew that bolt this was basically the hardest part of it it's unscrewing the bolt um, 
my Land Cruiser is 30 years old. I don't think this has ever been changed. And I'm going to show you why I don't think it's ever been changed when we take it out. So we're going to do the same thing on the front, put the 19 millimeter to hold the fuel filter in place, and then the 17 millimeter to unscrew the hose. And that's pretty much it. You're going to notice here that there's going to be some um, fuel that starts to leak out. Uh, this is completely normal. Um, and so just kind of take your time on that. You don't want to be under it, uh, directly under it while this is happening because you're going to get soaked with gasoline. You also want to be careful, right? If you are doing this in a garage, this is gasoline. It is very flammable. So you might want to have a rag or something. So just be careful if it's a super hot day out. You definitely don't want gasoline dripping all over the place. Uh, so keep that in mind, right? Don't do this on dry grass. Simple stuff. Uh, just be careful uh, and stay safe. So that's about it um, to remove the two hoses from the uh, fuel filter there. And now we're going to remove the actual clamp, the, the holder that attaches it to the frame. All right. Pretty easy, right? So now we're gonna remove that bolt right there with a 12 millimeter, and there's another bolt on top of the frame, which I'm gonna to point to right now. It's hard to see. Uh, like I said, this is a very tight spot, so it's hard to film, but you can kind of see the direction where my um, uh, wrench is, and then I just kind of removed it by hand from there. And those are just two bolts that are attached to the frame pretty straightforward. Let's get it out on uh, the back of the Land Cruiser to swap out the, um, the bracket. All right, now that I have it out and the fuel filter removed, I wanna show you how dirty it was. I can't believe my engine was still running with, it basically is dirt, uh, super bad. Um, and so that is definitely not good. Uh, but I'm glad I replaced it uh, to get that cleaned out. And now my engine is running a lot better. So now we're going to swap out this bracket, right? Um, and so you'll notice there's some like grooves on the new fill filter and the old fill filter. And you'll also notice that the bracket itself has grooves. So you're just going to position it the same way. And remember the arrow points towards the engine. Okay. So when we put this, put this back together, the arrow is going to point towards where the engine is going. Um, just keep that in mind. And then we're gonna put the bracket exactly how we found it originally, how we took it out. Um, and there's a there's a direct way to do it, right? So this is obviously towards the top and that one is towards the bottom, exactly how we took it out. Everything is ready to go in the correct position. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you put everything back, you'll have, uh, I believe it's four sets of washers. Um, so you'll wanna put a washer on each side right? One right there where the fuel filter starts and then one at the end where the uh, fuel line starts. So just make sure you have those washers ready and put those in the position. They're brass and you're basically going to put it back together just the way we took it off with a 19 millimeter and um, to hold the fuel filter and then the 17 millimeter to kind of bolt it back on. Um, in this case, I just use wrenches. My big tip for the repair is to use a breaker bar. If you haven't, if you don't have one, uh, go buy one. I bought one at Harbor Freight. I think it cost me $14. It's not too expensive. Uh, and this helped me actually be able to crank off those bolts, right? So you're gonna use the same extension, uh, but you're gonna use a breaker bar for leverage. And it helped me out so much. Uh, I'm so glad I went out and bought it. Uh, another big tip is if you're going to use a 19 millimeter, make sure that it's it's thin. Uh, you don't want um, a thicker 19 millimeter because it's not going to fit in there. You want a nice and thin 19 millimeter wrench that's going to help you fit it right through the fuel filter where it's supposed to connect. All right, that's it. We have the fuel filter installed. It's very straightforward. Um, and now what we have to do is... What was that? I didn't realize my camera was freaking out like that. Um, we have to put the uh, circuit opening relay back in uh, if you didn't do that. I've already done this. I've already put it back in its place, uh, so I'm not going to show you how, but it's, you know, you just basically just put it back in the way you took it out. Uh, just press it back in. Uh, just make sure you're pressing it in the right um, location. You don't want to bend those back. And we're going to get it started and see how it runs. All right, now it's time to start the car. Let's see how it cranks. Ooh. So it's gonna take a couple of cranks 
uh, to get it started just because there was no fuel. Right? There's no fuel at first. So it's just gonna take a few of those cranks for it to actually get the fuel in there and for the fuel pump to start pumping fuel. So I'm gonna get under the car and we're gonna make sure that there's no leaks. All right, the last thing we want to do is check our work. So let's get under here. We have the engine still running and we're just gonna make sure that there's no leaking, that everything is looking good down there. Leave it running for about five to 10 minutes, uh, rev it up a little bit, make sure that there's no leaks. Um, and you should be good to go. If you're noticing a leak, maybe you didn't tighten it right. Um, make sure that you tighten it right. And also you don't want to um, over tighten it, um, but you also wanna make sure that you put it in those washers. So that is it for the video today, guys. I hope you found this helpful. I uh, hope you found it informative and I hope it helped you with uh, your fixing of your 80 series Land Cruiser. Like I said before, Guys, if you're new to me, if you're new to the channel, I make videos on my 80 series Land Cruiser. I have a ton of videos on maintenance, a ton of uh, comparison videos that I like to do. So if you like 80 series Land Cruisers, feel free to check those videos out. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.